Hello, everybody, and welcome to this week's episode of Coast to Coast with Coach Miller. I'm Matt Bowling here with who else? Head coach Austin Miller. Coach, uh, you're coming off a split with Arkansas last weekend. Uh, now that you've had a chance to, you know, really kind of sleep on it and uh, look over some film, what did those games teach you about your team? Well, for one, that we can you know, rebound fairly well off a, a bad performance. You know, Friday night, we didn't really come with the intensity and we weren't prepared to kind of compete at the level that it takes to, to play hockey games. And we were still kind of in practice mode. And so uh, it was good to see the guys rebound well uh, on Saturday and, you know, pick up that intensity and, you know, come out uh, with the focus that's needed to win games and and we did end up getting the win so that was nice to see now this is a three game week for you guys uh, starting with a trip to arctic edge on thursday to face uco uh this is a new chapter in the rivalry as you're uh, you're expanding the series from four games to six um can you kind of tell us how that came about you know, it's something that we've been talking about for uh, a couple of years now, but, uh, you know, just speaking with uh, Coach Rivera at, at UCO, we had, uh, you know, wanted to kind of build off the momentum created from the games that we have. And, you know, previous years, they were always games that were held uh, at the very end of each semester. So the end of the first semester and at the end of the second semester. And, you know, both schools both arenas usually get uh, fairly good crowds for that game and you know the buzz around both programs is good after those games and so we were hoping to kind of play some games where we could you know build off the momentum created from those games and get more fans in the door uh, moving forward uh, throughout the semester and so that was part of it and you know the other part was to kind of create some kind of, um, you know, trophy and or, you know, have a, a winner for the series between uh, the two schools throughout the, the course of the year. And so that's something that we're, we're still working on, but uh, for the time being, uh, you know, just getting those extra games. And, um, you know, the, the last part is the fact that, you know, both schools are always very competitive. And I think, being able to, to play each other where we're not having to travel very far is, is a absolute bonus and uh, something that we're, you know, again, trying to take advantage of uh, since we have the opportunity to play each other. All right, sure. Now, uh, at, like you said, uh, these UCO matchups have historically come uh, at the end of each semester with uh, fairly big implications uh, in terms of conference standings. So, you know, knowing that, how does it feel to be playing them in September, early in the season, for in a game that won't even count towards the conference standing, standings? Uh, is you is know, it a different there, vibe? Or? There's no different vibe, right? The, both schools uh, absolutely do not like each other, and it wouldn't matter if it was, you know, technically, a, you know, an exhibition game or a game with, you know, the conference on the line in uh, February, uh, the intensity is still going to be there. Um, you know, the games might not be as polished as they are, you know, having, you know, 10 or 15 games beforehand, but, uh, the intensity will be there. Uh, the rivalry is still there and, you know, both teams still, you know, want to beat, uh, the other just as bad, uh, no matter what's on the line. So I expect that it, there'll be, the same type of games that they are every other time of the year. All right. Now, uh, after that Thursday game, you guys come back to Blazers Ice Center to face Waldorf on Friday and Saturday. Uh, this is the first time OU has ever played Waldorf. So uh, how did they end up on the schedule? And uh, what are you expecting from them? You know, they're going to be good. They're going to be, um, you know, I know they – are a newer team to the ACHA and, and to division one, but uh, we're expecting, you know, very competitive games. And again, if we're not, 
you know, ready to play, then, you know, we can be beaten on any, on any night. And so we have to make sure that we're focused and, and ready to compete. Um, you know, we, through our commissioner, uh, we knew that they were kind of looking for some, some games and, you know, we were looking for a couple more home games. And so just through kind of them looking for games and us looking for games, uh, we kind of found a way for it to work uh, within our conference schedule, their conference schedule. And uh, yeah, so luckily we were able to fit them in and we're looking forward to kind of playing them and getting some, uh, a new team kind of in the mix. All right. Now, three game weeks used to be pretty common under the, uh, under the old WCHL yep. format before uh, realignment happened. Uh, now, not so much. So how does, how is, how does playing that extra game uh, affect your lineup management? You know, it just got to depend on, on what happens, uh, right? I mean, we're going to be playing uh, UCO on Thursday night. And, you know, usually after those games, guys are pretty sore and pretty banged up. And so we'll just have to kind of play it by ear and see how things are going. I mean, if we're playing the way that we need to play and the way that I want to play, then hopefully we can, um, you know, conserve some energy here and there and, and be able to, to stretch a lineup throughout three games. But we've got, you know, plenty of guys that are itching to get in there. So if there's ever um, any kind of, you know, injury or guys aren't playing up to their potential, then we've got guys, you know, like I said, itching to, to get in and, and play and uh, prove that they belong uh, in the lineup. So we'll just have to kind of see how things progress over the, the course of the weekend. All right. Now it's time to get into our mailbag. Uh, it's pretty sparse this week. We only really got one question, and that is from at Laney underscore dot X on Instagram. Uh, what is it like coaching at a place like OU? It, it's a, uh, you know, there's a, a rich tradition at OU as far as, you know, the athletics go and to, you know, be a part of it at any level, whether it's, you know, the club hockey level or, you know, in the, at the NCAA level, it's, it's an honor and, and something we don't take lightly and we're very proud to do and, and want to keep up with that kind of tradition that OU has of excellence and, you know, that kind of championship mindset of um, if you're not, you know, competing for championships and, and bringing it every single night, then you're not kind of holding, uh, you know, keeping up with the bar that, that the other sports are, are setting. And so that's what we want to do and, and what our goal is and, and what my goal is for this place. I know for you, especially, uh, you know, coaching at your alma mater uh, of, of the program that, at the program that you played for, I know that uh, that really must uh, be pretty special. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, it's, you know, the program was, you know, obviously a, a good program when I got here and, you know, my goal is to, you know, leave it in a much better spot than when I got here. And that's uh, what we're trying to do. And, and what we're trying to build here is a championship program and one that is, you know, competitive every year, winning conference championships and, you know, hopefully, you know, competing for a national championship and bringing it back to, to OU. All right. Well, now it is time for your top line where I name the thing, you give me your top line of that thing. You ready? Yes, sir. All right. Now with the OU-UCO rivalry back and bigger than ever, I want to know your top line of sports rivalries. Uh, the Yankees and the Red Sox obviously is a pretty good one. Um, Got to go to a, a Red Sox Yankees game at Fenway Park and then a Yankees Red Sox game at um, Yankee Stadium. So being a part of that and, and seeing it uh, firsthand was pretty cool. Um, I would say, I know it's a, a new one, but, you know, built on playoff hockey uh, a handful of years ago. I, I enjoy watching the Stars and the Nashville Predators play against each other. I think they've kind of had a good budding rivalry the last handful of years, um, which is nice to, nice to see and fun to watch. And then, you know, tonight, Monday night football, the Cowboys and the Eagles is another good one. And uh, it's 
always seems to come down to, you know, the Cowboys and the Eagles, the Cowboys and the Giants for who's going to win the NFC East. And so it's, uh, it starts tonight and I'm excited to, to watch the game this evening and see how it goes, how it starts. And that's interesting that you say that because most, uh, most Cowboys fans that I know uh, look at the franchise currently known as the Washington football team as their main rival. So uh, is that, you know, I just don't think that they've kind of been cutting it the last handful of years. And I know they kind of came out of the East last year, but um, I've back when I was, you know, watching, you know, Troy Aikman and Emmett Smith and, and those guys play and Michael Irvin, I always would think that the games between the, the Eagles were the, the more important ones and always the ones that seemed to kind of be a little more physical and, and hated uh, between the two teams. So that, in, in my opinion, those are the ones that I remember from, from when I was a kid. All right. Next up, Waldorf is coming to Oklahoma from Forest City, Iowa, uh, which is a town that I'm willing to bet not a lot of people could find on a map. Uh, so that kind of got me thinking, what is your top line of far-flung places that your, your hockey career has taken you? Whew. So let's see, I'd say the most far-flung place would be Fairbanks, Alaska, one of them. Um, going there in the dead of winter when, you know, snow banks were 10 and 15 and 20 feet high and you know, our coach was warning us not to go outside because if you get lost in the snow, you can die. And um, not seeing the sun while you're there uh, was pretty, was quite a culture shock from, from Dallas, Texas. Uh, and then Saskatoon, uh, Saskatchewan is another one going up there for a tournament when I was younger, you know, seeing, you know, nothing for miles and miles and miles. And, and then you, you know, pull up on a small town that has multiple hockey rinks and uh, just the the type of hockey that they play up there and how much they enjoy hockey and how it's kind of the, <clears throat> the country's main sport. It's, it's pretty cool. Um, and then, you know, uh, let's say kind of Calgary is another one that I, I've been to a handful of times that, again, I thought was, was really cool and, and how much they uh, love and, and cherish their hockey and, and, you know, just how cool it is to, to play up there. And, and when we were, I was, I think 15, 16 years old and we were playing against teams there and they were getting four and 5,000 uh, people at their games. And so it was just, it was a great experience uh, to be a part of. All right. Now with the NHL preseason getting underway this week, who is on your top line? of Stanley Cup contenders at this point in the year? Oof. Well, I think you'd <clears throat> you'd be making the mistake if you didn't include the two-time Stanley Cup champions on there, uh, Tampa Bay. Um, I know they've lost a couple pieces, but for the most part, they got uh, most of their team back, and I'm sure that uh, they've done a good job kind of filling in this, the piece that they, they lost to free agency or the expansion draft. And then uh, in the West, I think it's kind of a tie between uh, whether or not Colorado can kind of put the pieces together and, and be able to kind of transition into the type of hockey that's necessary to win in the playoffs and win a Stanley cup and, and Vegas, who's seems to have kind of all the pieces, but, um, again, being able to kind of transition from being very good and uh, winning a lot of games in the regular season to, you know, being able to kind of play that uh, grinded out playoff st uh, style hockey that you need to, to win. And then my finishing one, uh, I guess my fourth one, but uh, is the Stars. I'm, I'm a big Stars fan and um, I'm hoping that they can kind of put their pieces back together after uh, an off year last year and kind of get back to where they were, you know, two years ago where they, you know, had a really good run in the playoffs and, you know, made it all the way to the Stanley cup finals and we're a couple games away from, from winning. So that's 
that's my top line. And uh, like I said, I'm a big stars fan. So that's probably the, the center on my line. That's the one I'm, I'm hoping kind of does a lot and, and makes it happen. All right. So uh, Montreal's cup run was a fluke. You think? Not necessarily. I, I think it, it's, you know, I wouldn't, I don't want to say it's, it's luck or a fluke, but you know, as Dallas showed the next year, it's really hard to kind of to do that twice in a row. And you, you have to have, you know, so many things go right for you as far as injuries go, um, you know, goalies getting hot at the right time, players getting hot at the right time. Um, you got to have so many things go right for you. And over a long season, and playoffs, it's, it's tough to do. And, um, I really, you know, enjoyed and, and liked and respected how Montreal played and how they do play. And so I think it's, you know, conducive to uh, playoff hockey, similar to how, you know, the Islanders play. Um, but it's just, like I said, it's, it's the hardest trophy to win and it takes a lot of, um, good fortune and luck as far as injuries go and, and things like that. And so it's, it's hard to pick, you know, this early on kind of what's going to happen and seeing how things progress. But, um, you know, I wouldn't be surprised to kind of see that happen again, but the way that it was last year, Montreal got to face, you know, uh, Tampa Bay in the finals this year, they would have to play them in the conference finals or earlier on um, because they're going back to the, you know, the East and the West and the regular alignment go. And so it, it would, it'd be hard for them to, to beat Tampa Bay, I think, or, um, you know, the Islanders or some of those other teams in the East that are, are really well coached and, and have a lot of skill. All right. Solid points all around. Well, that is about all the time we have for this week's episode of coast to coast with coach Miller. Sooners travel to UCO this Thursday. Keep your eye on our social media for broadcast information there. Then be sure to tune in on Black Dog as the Sooners host Waldorf next Friday and Saturday.